Hi, everybody. My name is Sergey Shekian. I'm web application scanner developer at Qualys. And as, as a side project, I was playing with application layer denial of service attacks and develop, developed a tool which helps you to test your websites. And I'm going to speak about distributed denial of service attacks in general and application layer denial of service attacks in particular. Uh, I'll be staring at my iPhone because I don't know how to set up presenters' notes on, on MacBook. So I'll be reading my notes from my iPhone if I forget something. So, so every day we see more and more uh, headlines about distributed denial of service attacks targeting corporations, persons, governments, opposition and it's it becomes part of our life life and so I just wanted to remind you what denial of service attack is uh, those are attacks that aimed at blocking access by outside users to an internet service or a website and they usually do this by either overwhelming one or, uh, one or more of the resources of the server or just flooding network infrastructure or, uh, or devices. Uh, more headlines and types of attack. Uh, the of service attacks are blow tech or plumpest of tools in the web application exploit arsenal. And uh, simplest, simplest attacks employ nothing more than a flood of packets uh, that overwhelm the target's capability to handle such an amount of traffic. And if web application can talk, they might even thank the attackers uh, for unloading them but I'm kidding, and uh, just the thing is that under such attacks, such dumb attacks, uh, web application itself might never even see the, uh, the full effect of the assault because the network stacks or operating systems would uh, fall over before legitimate traffic reached to the application. And on the other hand, uh, the class of denial of service attacks that target resource consumption, like CPU cycles or memory or file descriptors or whatever it is, can and should be addressed by the web application itself and or database or like framework behind that web application or uh, web server platform. And so these types of attacks don't have universal applicability that most network layer attacks do and we're going to speak about them. So how I imagine distributed denial of service attacks, the flood flu type, the network layer, I imagine them as a mob uh, and where like thousands of packets or requests or what else, or something else brings down one single server. And application layer attacks uh, are like more like this guy. <laughs> it's like sharp, straight shooter. It can get the target with, with one single uh, knock and, or punch. And basically, that's the case where one brings down one website. So it's one to one kind of relationship, the simplest way. Uh, some numbers about distributed denial of service attacks. Uh, actually, this morning I got a re reply from Kaspersky Lab. They released a, uh, a report on denial of service attacks for last, quat last, last quarter. And I was wondering why they didn't mention any slow attacks, application layer attacks, and they said that uh, there are bot botnets that implement implement slow attacks, but 
flood attacks dominate so far and they are decided not to cover slow attacks for, the, for, for the last quarter. Also, I actually chatted with botnet operator over ICQ last week, was trying to uh, act as a customer of their services. And honestly, I was trying to get from them what types of attack are they gonna use. And I actually, I had a web server hosted on GoDaddy. I asked him how much would it cost me to knock out a web server host in United States hosted by GoDaddy and uh, for one hour. He said 20 bucks, uh, just pay and enjoy the results. I was trying to get the information like what kind of attack they are gonna use. He replied we're gonna use SimFlood. I'm like, GoDaddy most likely would filter out SimFlood. He's then will apply something more complex. That's why 20 bucks, not the five bucks, our regular price. Because we don't know what we're gonna test. <coughs> so uh, the conversation ended up by, um, he gave me the links to the forums, internet forums, where I can get customer cred um, credentials and feedback. <laughs> it's like real business. And I actually wanted to pay to that guy, but they accept only web money, and I didn't know how to, try, how to buy web money with PayPal, and they don't accept PayPal, so I'll probably continue chatting with them later. Uh, here's the actual screenshot from their forum. It's in Russian. Um, I translated some main points that they really, they think they are running a regular business with that marketing slogans and everything. Like they, they will take projects with anti-dose, they offer wholesale discounts, they have customer um, credentials and feedback. And here's another screenshot from another forum uh, advertising the same botnet. They offer pretty simple arsenal. Everything is flood. Uh, Oh, yeah, and I'll tell you how this works, in, at least in Russian market. Closer to the summer, for example, tour, uh, travel agencies hire someone, they call him SEO uh, specialist, uh, search engine optimization. But actually the task of that guy to move the company's website he works for to the top level uh, to, to the top of the search uh, search uh, results of they for for some reason they um, concentrate on Russian search engine the Yandex but they all know when the uh, when Yandex updates their <coughs> database every day at some particular time they call it uptime update time and if you keep competitors website down for 24 hours and like between those apps then it guaranteed that competitor's website would be sev at least several bullet bullets lower than it's usually there. So that's how they get uh, more customers who are just typing, I want to go to Egypt and click the first link. And uh, actually Kaspersky's uh, report states that denial of service attacks against travel agencies in Russia grow five times in high season. So it's, it's really a business. Uh, I have some demo time, and then I'll switch back to my presentation explaining what just happened. So I wrote this simple tool which actually consolidates all known slow, uh, slow types of attacks, like slow boris, slow posts, slow read. Uh, and some others, like Apache Killer, but we are not gonna speak about it today. What I have on my virtual machine. So it's a, what is it? First I'm gonna attack an Apache default configuration of Apache server, which I downloaded on Ubuntu using apt-get and 
I didn't touch the configuration files file at all, and except adding some dummy content. And here is the, oh yeah, and I enabled mod status, just to see the status. Tool works on any Linux system, any Mac OS, Mac OS. It even works with Cygwin, on Cygwin, so you can run it on Windows. I actually tested it for the first time yesterday, but it works. <laughs> Uh, the command line. So here we have the dash x means we'll be emulating slow read attack. And I'll talk about it later. The URL, the connection count, which is thousand in this case, and it's more than enough. Uh, K3 is pipeline factor. If web server supports HTTP pipelining, uh, this three, this number means we're gonna request the same content three times using the same connection, just to multiply the size of the response by three. And, and that's it. And the output goes to this plain Apache besides demo file. I'm running it. Status updates every five seconds. You see that Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> we also better specify the connection rate because default is 50 connections per second, which is low, like 200. Let's see what happens with Apache. It has this number of threads, connections in the right state. Uh, 192, 168, what's the IP? Oh, anybody remembers the IP? Uh, man. Okay, I'll show you it in here. It's the same server. Oops, no, it's not the same. Now it's the same server and it's, does it work? Oh no, it's here. We see it. <laughs> oh, here. We can't load the page. A uh, statistic here shows that we have 700 connections pending and connected 293, two connections closed and service is not available. I think it's enough. We can open the output file, which I told generates. Yeah, we see here that on sixth second, service was already not available. If connection rate would, have, if we set connection rate higher, this could happen even sooner than six seconds. We have constant number of pending connections and we have constant number of connected stuff. I also wanted to show a test against varnish cache server, which some people might think is securing your website because <coughs> well, doesn't matter why. Uh, just will show you what's happening against Varnish web server. So it's the same Apache web server, but it is behind cache, uh, uh, Varnish cache server. We're running the attack. There's actually only one connection established by Varnish because it's the same content, should be delivered to 1,000 different connections. So Apache, uh, Varnish cache server is smart and it's make, it makes only one single connection to the actual web server but it is already down long time ago. Uh, where is it? It is on port, their default port. And it's, again, default varnish server, but I actually didn't find any settings to play with to make it not vulnerable. I didn't spend too much time, but yeah, here. 
it, it doesn't even accept new connections. Uh, it doesn't even put those connections in the queue. Uh, that's enough. We can open the log file. So again, almost the same statistics. On fifth second, server went down with, and actually this chart means that you need only 239, 240 connections to knock out the server behind Varnish. And not even one single server, but there could be a farm of the servers, and you would think that you are speeding things up by putting a cache server in front of it, but it's actually acting as a bottleneck in this case. Oh, uh, let's go back to the presentation. If we can. Yeah. Okay, so I'll be speaking about these three uh, slow type attacks, though there are a lot of other interesting application layer denial of service attacks like uh, like SQL injection, which can run or benchmark. What was that? Benchmark, for example, on SQL, uh, on my SQL, and caused a denial of service by one single request, or like keep alive attack, or. THCS SL DOS or hash collision or uh, something related to regexes. If server side regex <coughs> engine is poor, po poorly developed. Uh, yeah, mainly I'll be talking about these three types of attacks because my tool supports them. Aim of the attacks. So as opposed to, as opposed to flood, attacks or those network layer attacks. These slow attacks are low bandwidth and theoretically, or not even theoretically, I ran my tool on, on, a, on my jailbroken iPhone. Though it's, a, it's a long story, that's why I'm not releasing anything for iPhone, but it, it is possible. And I was able to run it successfully over edge connection, which is much more slower than 3G. And it's edge because uh, I'm on T-Mobile and iPhone doesn't support, iPhone on T-Mobile doesn't work in 3G speeds. So, so yeah, that's, that's it. And yeah, the main thing is that all three uh, slow attacks are aiming the one single thing to fill up the concurrent connections pool, which is usually relatively slow, uh, small. Uh, before we go ahead, I wanted to remind you how HTTP request looks like, but this RFC notation is not that re readable, human readable, so here is an actual example. Uh, HTTP request starts with request line and then some mandatory and not mandatory headers, HTTP headers, and as you notice, they are delimited with carries return line feed characters, uh, symbols. And server would know that it ends, it, it, it's supposed to finish reading the request when it sees two CRLFs following each other. So this blank line or CRLF character means end of the receipt from the client. And server can start generating the response and sending it back. Uh, okay, slow lower is the first slow attack. Uh, what it does, it tries to keep as many connections open as possible by, um, and hold them open uh, by sending incomplete headers. So it never sends that final CRLF. And if you open 1,000 connections to the web server, which is supposed to handle only 1,000 concurrent requests, server would start rejecting service to legitimate users. Here is some stupid animation. So we're sending this first part of the request with some legitimate resource 
in this case it's like main page or forward slash and with host header and some random header with with some he random ASCII characters. Everything is delimited with CRLF that slash r slash n is actual CRLF. And then if, for example, server configured to drop the connection if there is no data coming within 60 seconds, we know, we experiment experimentally figured out that the timeout is 60 seconds or it's your own server and you know what the number is. So you send 59 seconds later some another stupid, meaningless set of ASCII characters, delimited with CRLF. And then again and and again, and you can virtually prolong the connection forever. Unless you hit some limit, for example. Server has a limitation on number of actual HTTP headers or on the size of the HTTP request itself or some, some, some other limitation. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately there is no reliable configuration like, or advice to, universal advice to protect your web servers, but there are some recommendations that could minimize your vulnerable surface, and I'll talk about it a little bit later. Another attack, slow post, uh, the principle is similar to slow lorries. Uh, it again keeps many connections to the target web server and opens, uh, so to the server open and holds them open for as long as possible. But instead of prolonging the header section of the HTTP request, it prolongs the, the uh, that message body section. So you send your post request. Looks very legitimate, so no filters or IPSs could detect unless they know what to look for. And then pay attention to the content length header where we specify 4096 in this case. That means server would be reading, after receiving the final, that blank line, final CRLF char uh, characters, it would read, it would try to read 4096 bytes before processing that, this request. So we send that final CRLF, everything looks legitimate. Then 59 seconds later, we send some name value pair which mimics some form submit results. Uh, and then some random name value pair again with ASCII characters and then again and again. And you prolong the connection the same way as for slow lorries. Just for example, IAS has protection against slow header. It, it IAS uh, is Microsoft's Internet Information Server. They introduced the protection in IAS, I think, 7. Against low headers, uh, they have a timeout. If, if server receives the HTTP request headers for some period of time and it never finished, it just drops the connection. But that protection doesn't help in this case. In slow read now. Principle is the same. The attacks takes, but the attacks takes different approach. So, in, in case of slow read and slow lorries, we were slowing down the request. And in case of slow read, uh, it sends the full request. So, it doesn't. Dif it, it's not different from any. Uh, legitimate HTTP request that would come from your customer. Uh, but it slows down in, uh, read in, res in response processing section. So your client reads the response from the server very slowly, so server <coughs> keeps pulling that uh, connection to send the rest of the information, but it, can, it can't, and the result is the same. You are filling up the concurrent connections pool. And yeah, how is it happening? It's happening using known uh, TCP 
protocol behavior when if client says that my buffer is this small, like 10 bytes, for example, uh, the recipient, the server in our case, by TCP protocol, supposed to wait and send probe, rec probe uh, messages asking, are you ready yet, are you ready yet? And if client replies with window size zero, which is on the next page. Uh, TCP doesn't have any mechanisms to handle this because uh, Honestly, application is supposed to handle situations like this. If application thinks that the recipient is not ready to receive my information for one minute, then drop the connection. But most of the applications applications are not handling this case. So some details. Yeah, the key point is uh, of this attack is to find the resource on the server, which is larger than server send buffer, kernel space send buffer, which on most Linux systems is around 65K. So if you find something larger than 65K, uh, then you most likely would successfully attack the server. Or even if you can't find anything larger than that, but server supports uh, the um, HTTP pipelining, you can multiplex the response by pre-requesting the same resource several times using the same connection, so you will fill up the server send buffer anyway. Then. Uh, here is, again, some very basic animation. So on your right side is the small receive buffer of the client. On your right, no, on your, what is it? left side. On your right side is the server with relatively large send buffer, but you are going to fill it up. That's send buffer per connection. So your malicious client requests a, a, some big page, relatively big page, can, on, H, on application layer. HTTP request is very legitimate. It can be randomized if you care about not being catched uh, by uh, IPSs or IDSs, but the only difference is that on network layer, your connection, when it, in connection stage, you let the server know that your receive buffer is relatively small, for example, 1459 bytes. Server accepted the request, picked the resource from the disk or memory or whatever it is, made it ready, sent it to the buffer, so, buff, so kernel delivers it over the wire, but it doesn't fit into send buffer, so your server still has to monitor that connection to see when the, its kernel will let, him know, let it know that you can send the rest of the data. Uh, yeah, it generates the HTTP response tries to send first chunk of data, which is like 1459 bytes. But this guy, the client, would accept that 1459 bytes and say that I don't have any more space to accept any data. So your server stuck there. It has to monitor that connection because it has to deliver the entire content. But the client would keep replying that no, I, I don't have any more space in my buffer. And just to, TCP has a mechanism for like, probing. I don't know, 59 seconds later, the client can say that I have 10 more bytes to accept, so the server would send another 10 more, more bytes, then wait another minute, I the link, and then another 10 more bytes. So basically you are achieving the same thing you achieve with slow low resource, slow post, but in this case, attack is even more invisible because on application layer it is legitimate connection and very low, very few number of protection mechanisms would pay attention to the TCP that initial receive window size, if it's, very, if it's small or not. Uh, yeah. To emphasize the difference between slow read and st 
and other slow types of attack. I just wanted to uh, extrapolate that to some real life example. So imagine a slow line at a fast food restaurant and like every person in that line starts thinking loud. Once he reaches to the cashier, he starts thinking that, yeah, I want to get that burger or no, I'll get just coffee or basically he slows down the line and slows down the service. And then, for example, one minute later, he made his order, he paid, the, he took his order, and the next customer approached. So basically, that's how uh, slow lorries or slow post work. And key thing there is it is possible to identify and isolate that slow guy in his request phase while he's asking for something. And in case of slow read, uh, the picture is a little bit different. It's the, the same line, it's the same customers, but once they reach to the cashier, they act very fast and they know what they want. But like in this case, the guy makes order of 50 pizzas. And then he even pays, he, everything is fine, but he cannot take all the 50 pizzas to the car, so he has to go back and forth with two pizzas in his hand, and he slows down the the flow, but he's um, slowing down in the response receipt reception phase. So, if you were monitoring only your requests, if you think that your payloads would appear in the request only, then you're going to miss this attack, and. comparison. So summarizing, uh, yeah, most defense mechanisms are, are expecting the malicious payload in the request phase. And, but as to me, the entire transaction should be monitored to catch. And most of the mitigations are based on monitoring only request, like for example in Apache range header, you monitor uh, in Apache range header attack or like SQL injection, yeah, monitoring the application layer, the data for malicious SQL statements in your request is enough, but you are not gonna catch anything like slow read. Uh, are you vulnerable? There is a good chance that you are because I tested Default configurations of Nginx, LightTPD, IIS, Apache, under Mac, and under, uh, I tested also Apache under FreeBSD, and on, I tested all this stuff on um, Ubuntu, and <coughs> all of these servers are vulnerable, at least on Ubuntu, for example, uh, except IIS, of course. Um, Varnish cache proxy is vulnerable. Shoutcast, it's a streaming server which is used very widely now, but it, it is vulnerable, though it's not like pure HTTP application, but uh, data goes back and forth over HTTP and it is vulnerable, why not? Uh, yeah, about Varnish, it is quite interesting. I, when I released the slow read attack, um, I got two emails from two different guys from two different continents, one from Brazil, another from Netherlands, uh, asking me if I can take a look at the test results. They ran slow HTTP test, the tool, my tool, and they got some results and they were thinking that there is a false positive in the results because they were sure that uh, Varnish protects them because they have a farm behind that varnish like with seven or eight different virtual Apaches and databases and stuff like that, but, but tool shows that they are vulnerable. And I looked, I, basically they were vulnerable, really. And I don't know how easily fix their problem uh, besides like switching to squid or something because Varnish doesn't have any configurations related to concurrent connections. Uh, it has like 
number of, it changes number of open file descriptors limited by operating system one, uh, before it starts, but basically I, I don't know how to fix it. And bad thing there is they were, they were sure they are vulnerable, uh, they are protected and this is a false positive. Yeah, what should you do? If you have, or if you know Russian, go to some Russian sure. website and ask them to attack you for 20 bucks. Or you can download my tool, or there are other plenty, plenty of other tools. Just mine is uh, consolidating all the attacks in one binary, and I think it's more easy to to use my tool. Uh, and I'm also working on white hat botnet. So check out the slow hammer that me in two months. We have a working demo. It's it's a botnet hosted and Bots are hosted in the cloud in different geographical zones, so it could mimic real botnets pretty well. Detection and mitigation. Drop connections with abnormally small TCP advertised window. I honestly, I don't know how to do it easily because I'm not a big expert in IP tables, but I think IP tables should allow you to do that. Uh, have an absolute connection timeout no matter what, because it's really, it doesn't really make sense to, to uh, rely on the client, on the client when it will close the connection legitimately, because, yeah, and there is a very interesting thing, Apache, has a timeout directive in configuration file, but, and by default it's, I don't remember, I think it's for example 60 seconds, but that, six, that Apache would, would never drop the connection, it, that 60 seconds mean, means Apache would drop the connection if there is no data arriving for 60 seconds. If you keep sending something byte by byte every 59 seconds, that uh, timeout would never trigger. Limit whatever is possible. Uh, if your web application is not supposed to generate like 50 or uh, yeah, 50 headers with within with one single HTTP request, or if you know that browser is not supposed to generate anything over 50, then why not limiting it to 50, for example? Or like if you have a login form which submits username and password and uh, it's not supposed to be larger than 200 bytes, there is no reason to have the Apache's default, which is two gigabytes, by the way. So somebody can drop data byte by byte to your URL, which accepts that login credentials for, for forever. Uh, what is it? Yeah, verbs. The same Apache or Nginx or Light TPD would, would wait for complete HTTP request before analyzing what the verb, the get or post or head or whatever, connect or whatever is there, before they analyze it. So you can have something like fake, fake slow verb specified in your HTTP request and Apache would be as vulnerable as it would be with post or with get. And uh, because it would never analyze what's written there until the connection finishes, uh, the HTTP request finishes. That's dangerous because if you are filtering your log by uh, get request or, or by post request, uh, malicious request could, could, could be unnoticed. And you just yeah, what you have to do, you, it's better to reject anything you don't know about. Uh, but in case of Apache, it won't help because <laughs> Apache is supposed to read the entire HTTP request before accepting or rejecting it. If you never finish your request, Apache would never reject it. Uh, yeah, define minimum data rate. IAS has built-in attribute for that. Mod security has... Uh, oh. Talk about it. 
on the next slide. What else can you use? Qualys Web Application Scanner has passive detection. Like passive means it not, it's not actively uh, attacking your website. It just, based on the connection behavior of the server, it can tell if you are vulnerable or not. Mod security has a lot of useful thing, both uh, around slow lorries and slow post protection and around slow read. Um, in 2.6, they introduced that sec write state limit attribute and sec read state limit attribute, which actually can limit your connection lifetime in, per IP address, which means basically if you set <coughs> those two attributes to one minute, mode security would, would drop a connection if it is in read state or if, if it is in write state for longer than one minute, which makes sense because normally, unless your customer is uploading a huge image or download, or no, in case of downloading, it won't work. If he's uploading something, just have a dedicated server for uploads, for example. Snort, once I released that slow read related stuff, Snort responded that they are working on uh, having ability to specify a range of TCP advertised window, accept, like range they want, you want to uh, decline or accept. Also Akamai uh, released one week ago, uh, they didn't release, they actually announced it, announced it, uh, they're gonna release it in April, but that Kona side defender supposed to handle both flood types of attacks, flood type of attacks and uh, application layer including slow reads, slow lorries, SQL injections that are causing denial of service and things like that. And there is another <coughs> useful script developed by this guy, Christian Fallini. Um, he's expert in denial of service attacks and script is very <laughs> lame, but it works. It's actually, um, you can specify, specify um, for example, a, a geographical zone, like specify a rule saying, if there is more than 50 connections from Estonia, and they are, all 50 connections are either in read state, are, yeah, it doesn't matter. They are open for longer than five minutes, blacklist Estonia, and then, or send me an, e an email or do whatever you want. You can specify it in the script. Pretty, pretty useful thing, it's just script based so it's not that fast but it, it works. Uh, yeah, who reacted first when I released that slow read? Uh, Say it again. Yeah, they, this is, all my recommendations were based on one single machine attacking you. If it's a botnet, then combine these recommendations with uh, anti-distributed denial of service attacks. Yeah, I don't think you can do anything if somebody will, atta will attack you with botnet, but using these slow types of attacks. <laughs> Hopefully Akamai would do something about it because they are charging you money, but I don't know, it will be released in April and I have no idea how they do that. But based on their previous products, they're supposed to do well. Uh, yeah, who reacted first? <laughs> Gamers reacted first. Like six days after I released that slow read related uh, post Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe found that um, using slow read it is possible to prevent anyone from joining the server and uh, they released the several patches for different versions of Open Transport Tycoon and they even reported CVE entry in uh, the vulnerability database 
so they took it serious and <laughs> it'd be nice to see other developers uh, reacting that fast to denial of service attacks or vulnerabilities. Yeah, and my summary is that hopefully uh, tool I developed or, and other guys developed uh, would help researchers to concentrate on fixing things rather than developing proof of concept tools and hopefully people will start paying attention or uh, <coughs> attackers would act faster than we react. So hopefully uh, researchers will concentrate on fixing things. And that's it. That's my final slide. Any questions? No? I, I, I mentioned the Outpost 24 first. Uh, yeah, Outpost 24 first came up with the, their SOC stress, SOC, SOC stress proof of concept, which was never released. But yeah, they were first talking about it. Then Angular 2 developed by Litty Hor, some, some, some guy who developed Ankiller 2 tool, uh, implemented that slow read attack, but he was, they, uh, they both were using um, raw sockets to craft TCP packets by hand in there. Like, I'm talking about technical details. Uh, my approach is easier because I'm not using any raw sockets, any low level programming. Uh, you can manipulate the, uh, your client's receive buffer size by just set so opt uh, by uh, the SO receive buffer attribute. So the direct, there is a direct relation between set so, uh, SO, SO receive buffer and your actual window size that would be re declared by your TCP IP stack. And on also, yeah, my tool does uh, implements the attack on, or it exp implements it over HTTP, but like any server application could be vulnerable to that type of attack and could be dangerous. Other questions? Nginx has a lot of even built-in attributes that could be helpful because you can limit almost anything with Nginx. Just thing is that Nginx, a default configuration in, in Nginx, it is either 2,000 connections per co concurrent connections, but on the other hand, on at least on Ubuntu, uh, they were not changing the open file descriptors, which is by default is some low number, and by default you are vulnerable, and 90% of people wouldn't even care looking at concurrent connections number or at open, open file descriptors limit. Nginx is pretty handling pretty well, these, at least slow loris and slow host. And for Apache, there is a mod, mod rec timeout, request timeout, which is, I think, part of, of it is, I think, part of mod security. Uh, using mod security should be totally enough to, to protect your Apache. Uh, also, event NPM of the Apache, there is a, it used to be experimental NPM. Uh, what's NPM stands for? Don't remember. But that event NPM handles, the architecture of that is uh, very, well uh, designed, and event NPM handles such attacks very well, but thing is it doesn't support SSL connections. So it's not a complete solution. 
So that's it. Thank you very much for voting.